Okay, last week in my poking around on the internet, I learned about the Krell Music Patch, an idea for creating generative music attributed to composer Todd Barton. Todd Barton created this on his bookless synthesizer, but he was attempting in this patch to emulate the score from the 1956 film Forbidden Planet, composed by Lewis and Bebe Baron. Now, not to get too into it because there's lots of other resources to dig into on the topic, but actually in the credits of the film, it doesn't say the Barons wrote music for the film, it says they wrote electronic tonalities. Now, this is apparently because the Barons didn't belong to the Musicians Union, and so they couldn't credit this music as score. Anyway, the score for this film is amazing, and I recommend you watch it or try to pick up the soundtrack somewhere. Back to Todd Barton's patch, he called it the Krell Music Patch, named after, spoiler alert for a 1956 movie, an alien race that used to live centuries ago. In the film, there's an extremely brief moment where they play some music from this centuries-old civilization, the ancient music of the Krell. I'll see if I can link that in the description, or I'm sure you can use your internet savvy to track that down. Now, what's interesting to me about this is, as a computer music person, I've been making generative music through programming. And I thought this analog means of creating generative music is really, really neat. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a bookless synthesizer, so I'm going to bring it back to digital and build this in pure data, but I want to steal this analog idea and how I do it. Now, a few disclaimers here. My pure data patch is going to be a rather liberal interpretation of the Krell music patch. I don't think there's any real authentic Krell music patch, but the general idea is we're going to have an envelope, and that envelope's going to control the amplitude of a note, and then when that envelope ends, it's going to trigger the next note, and that next note will have a new modulated envelope, a new pitch, and a new timbre. And so, in this way, we have a constantly changing musical texture that's unified by these simple rules. So I'll also say it's okay to be a little ambivalent about generative music, music that's generating itself. And again, spoiler alert for Forbidden Planet, but these ancient Krell went extinct because they focused on technology to the exclusion of understanding their own nature. So a quick plug here, support the humanities and the arts. Steam, not STEM. All right, I'm going to get started. Let's start Command 1 by putting down an oscillator. OSC tilde. So this is our sine wave oscillator. If I just click on this, go Command 1, DAC tilde. Oh, I got a big old click there because I didn't set it at an initial frequency. Let's do 440. Uh, that's going to be very loud. No, it's not so loud, but still annoying. So let's stop that. And what we do to make it not so loud is we multiply tilde. Again, this is how we reduce the amplitude. Let's set it at the moment to be zero, which should be silence. And then run that to our left and right. And now what we can do is we can make an envelope. Let's start with a bang to trigger it. And I'm going to do this. I'm just going to make an AR envelope, and I'm going to do this with my line. What I'm going to do a little bit different here is that every time I start this envelope, I want it to have a random attack and decay, or release, I should really say, a random attack and release. So maybe let me start by making my regular envelope, and then we'll work from there. Command 2 for a message. We'll say go to 0 0.75 amplitude over 500 milliseconds. And then Command 1, delay. Uh, sorry, and I'll just make that delay 500 milliseconds. Command 2, go back down to 0 over 2 seconds. Command 1, line 0, time scale of 3, so initially starting at 0, and then every 3 milliseconds it'll update. Run these both into there, and then run this into here. Command E. All right, there it is. So now, Command E, we can make it so we'll randomize this. So let's delete these wires. And so now I'm going to go Command-1, Random, and let's choose how long we want our random envelope to be. 
So let's start by choosing a number between zero and 500 milliseconds. Command one, we'd never want that envelope to be zero. So let's add 50 there. So that would, now we're picking a number between, so zero to 499 plus 50 is going to be 50 to 449. I can run this in here. I take this 500 and I make it a dollar sign one which means it takes in what's coming in here rather than that number itself. So here, let's do command three to see the number. Okay, we don't have that stopping it right now. Okay. Now, if we know that attack is 360 milliseconds, for example, we want that random number to control the length of this delay too. And so now when the new number comes out of here, it changes the length of that delay. So what we want to do now is we want to make this a random number too. Random and we'll make this one longer. Let's make this uh, 3000 maybe. And then Command one, we'll add 100 to it. So now we have a number for our release, our decay. Again, release really, that goes from 100 to 2999, uh, 3099 there. I think once again, place this with dollar sign one. And I'm just gonna line these up. I know that wire is a little hard to see. I could do that, fix that with a send and receive, but maybe we'll do that in a second. I like lining up my parallel ideas here. This random selection makes things clearer. Okay. I need to do one more thing actually, which seems a bit silly. Command one delay uh, five. So I'm actually gonna delay this bang once before I go to this delay. And the reason for that is I wanna give this, that split second, split second, five milliseconds, could probably do one and it'd be fine, but just to update that delay length before I choose my random number. Okay, so we're getting delays of different lengths and that's what we wanted. Now, also, I could pick a random note here. So let's go command one, random 88. And I've chosen 88 because I'm thinking about this as the range of the piano. And so for that, I want to go plus 21. And so now this has a range of 21 to 108, right? Picking a number from zero to 87, plus 21, zero plus 21 is 21. 87 plus 21 is 108, if I haven't, yes, I think I've done that right. So this is the range of piano keys. Again, it's just a sort of go-to. We can adjust this in different ways if we want. Let's do command three, a number to monitor that. And then I'm gonna do command one, M2F, because my oscillator wants a frequency, not a note number. That was a very low one to start with. So this is pretty great. This is what we want. The thing that we're missing is it automatically triggering it to, once this envelope here, this line goes back down to zero, to bang back up here. I did a bunch of experimenting with this. So maybe someone more clever than I am will have a better solution. My way is a little bit complicated, but I'll talk you through. So first let's start by going command three and let's monitor that. Okay, so once that gets back to zero, we want it to bang back up there. So what we can do is we can put in a select zero, right? And so then that'll bang out. Now watch what happens and I'll show you how I solved it. I'm sorry that note was so high. Do you see how it... 
see how it bangs when it starts too? That's not what we want. Boy, that's two really high notes in a row there. I might have to turn this down a bit. So my solution was to make something that turns it off and on. So if I were doing this in max MSP, I'd do this with a speed limb, or and I believe there's a speed limb if you're not using pure data vanilla, but just think, if we keep it in vanilla when we're done, we can build this into a game or, or an iPhone app or whatever we want to do, no problem. So this spigot only lets things through when it's on. So if I, if I just put a bang here, so my spigot, this toggle is off. Okay, nothing goes through. If I turn the toggle on, we can see that both those bangs go through. So here's what I'm going to do. Command two, a message, that's zero, that'll close the toggle. Command two, one, that'll open the toggle. So now what I want to do is when you bang, close it, and then command one, 100, uh, 1,000 gonna be too much. 100 milliseconds. When this bangs, wait for 100 milliseconds before you open it. Right? But now, let me set this feedback. Oh, actually, let me do this in a different way. Uh, command one, send. I'm gonna put EOC for end of cycle there. And I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm going to receive that up top. I'm sorry that that's off screen. There we go. Okay. Now with some luck, this should just go. Okay, now how do I stop it? Well, I've got to unplug something here. Let's just stop that for now. You might hear some crunchiness in those attacks, and I do a little bit, but just a disclaimer, I believe that's in my recording, because I'm, I'm simultaneously playing and recording it through my same computer, so I believe that's why. But anyway, let's enjoy some music here. Does this make sense so far? So this is just my oscillator here. And then this is my envelope. And then the envelope controls this, and once it's plugged in, I'll plug it back in, it just starts feeding back. So we now have a randomized duration and a randomized pitch, but we haven't yet randomized our timbre. And so, I'm going to do that with FM synthesis. Now, I don't want to get too into FM synthesis. I have another video where I sort of talk through the concepts, and I think there are far better tutorials than mine about how you accomplish this in pure data. But the idea is we're going to take this frequency and we're going to modulate it in the audible range. So again, I'm going to go Command-1 plus tilde. So I'm going to be adding a signal that's in the audible range. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to want another oscillator. And then we'll just go ahead and pick a random note the same way we did. Make, make, I'll just move this down so it's clearer. Now, I could just add this, but this oscillator is just going from negative one to one. What's better is if I can make this waveform louder, so I'm modulating further. This is the modulation index. I can just make this modulation index based off of that. Let's see how this works. OK, 
Okay, and then we can make a random filter for this. So let's go. BP tilde 100. Next is the Q, so that's the three. This might bring down some of that loudness as well. Ah, okay, there's our band pass. And then I'm just gonna take another one of these. Command D. Maybe I don't want this over the whole range of the piano. Maybe I'd change these numbers, but oh well. We'll leave that be for now. Okay. I mean, we're not gonna really feel any Forbidden Planet until we get some delays going. So let's start by doing our usual throw left, throw right. I know I do these in the wrong order. If I, you don't do the catches first, it pulls up an error in the window, but one of these days I'll break that habit. Okay, so this is just gonna allow me to wirelessly set something up here. Throw tilde delay. Command one. Let's do a low pass. High pass. Again, this is just for the delay effect. Command one, some attenuation. Command one, Del. Right, we're writing to the delay buffer here. We'll call it Del, oh, that was loud. Del buff. Doesn't really matter, we can make it a second long, this buffer, and then play it from there. Command D, once we have the Del right, we need a Del read. And then we'll throw to the left. I've made that feedback because I made it too loud. Sorry, right, there we go. Now that should be better. Offset them a little bit from each other. And then we'll set the delay to feed back. Right, so feeding it back into itself. Couple pops in there, but. More than a couple, maybe. Maybe I've made a mistake. Let me double check here. You know, it might be a good idea before I send this back just to delay it a little bit. It just gives it a time that might help with these those little pops that are coming up occasionally. Oops, but by cutting that chain, I lost it for a second there. Okay, let's try this. Well, and that's a pretty good start. Now, I'm doing all of my modulation randomly, and that's not the case in the original Corel patch, and you can look into it more, but it might be better if I don't purely do random numbers, if I instead have some LFOs that I'm taking snapshots of, doing sample and holds of, but I think this is a pretty good start. Again, I've taken this analog idea and made it digital again, maybe that's not helping, but it's a neat little generative idea, and again, 
since we've built this in pure data vanilla, if you're making a sci-fi game in Unity or something like this, you can just build this right on in. Lots of ways to expand this. I might come back to this again in a later video, but for now, have some fun, make some generative music, and you tweak these numbers and see what you can come up with. Thank you.